Right, and we can go to. Okay, right. Okay, there's there's no lag. Yeah, we we spoke about uh, thermodynamic activity coefficient, Raoult's law and Henry's law, um, and the uh, way activity of a solution and mole fraction of a solution are kind of uh, correlated. They are ordinarily the same in when you talk about uh, ideal solutions or Raoultian solutions. Uh, but then when there is interactions between uh, the different solutes are involved, then uh, it's not linear anymore. It's not uh, equal anymore. Activity and mole fraction. It is connected by a term uh, called the thermodynamic activity coefficient. And of course, when it's less than one or more than one, it has to have some deviation function behavior, which is what is represented in uh, Henry's law. All right. So we will uh, further we'll take some uh, thermodynamic uh, identities and and uh, equations, and then we'll try to see uh, the thermodynamic uh, behavior of solutions, like we discussed about thermodynamics of uh, gaseous mixing. All right. OK, now uh, there, there's something called Gibbs Duhem equation. Uh, it's fairly simple and straightforward in that. Uh, when you talk about the total free energy system. Uh, that you know is a function of um, temperature, pressure and the composition of various number of moles of different components that you have. You know anything these parameters that change, this changes the overall uh, free energy. And we have taken a lot of examples of that, um, starting from a fruit basket to all. OK, and if you were to write that in a differential form, you could simply write the small change in uh, the free energy um, can be tracked with the subtle change in the free energy with the change in the number of component of component I, number of moles of component I, while others remain constant. So like that, you can expand on that with all the variables that you have. All the variables, all the thermodynamic variables that can influence your total free energy. Uh, you sort of track the changes of each of those thermodynamic variables uh, by keeping others constant, and you write an expression like that. OK. and uh, we sort of write it in general as, you know, G uh, I is component I is del G by del N I. That's how we write it. So you uh, differentiate that, you get a term G I D N I and G J D N J, G K D N K, and things like that. This is a simple expression. This is the partial mole of free energy. Sometimes we represent the, this as a chemical potential, right? Mu. But as you know, this G, the total free energy, can also be written as the number of moles that we have for the component I and the molar free energy of that component I. This is the unit price of that this particular fruit, right? And you sum it all of all the different types of um, components that you have, then you can get the total free energy. Now, this is uh, you know, a uh, normal expression. Now, if you want to differentiate this expression, then you get the term. Um, from this, you can get the term um, NIDGI and GDNI. You get this. If you, if you, this is this GDN term that's there, and the NDG term that you get. All right, and since um, G is, is kind of state function. The, this one actually is equal to, to zero. Right? So you have NG when you differentiate, you have G N D G plus G D N. And that is uh, where N I D G I N J D J D G J and all of these things, when they become zero, then you would see that uh, this D G. G D N I is actually 
something which remains as 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 uh, you know uh, the other n dg part becomes zero. But so dg actually remains as g dni, and that's how we write as um, n i d g i is zero and x i d g i is zero. All right, and uh, th this is when you divide by the total number of modes. Then this is n i d g i, and then you normalize it with the number of moles that is present, you have X I D G I. All right. Now, with, with that information, let's uh, go and find out the total energy of um, uh, a component of a system, which you can write as N A into G A bar plus N B into G B bar. As G A bar is the molar free energy of component A, and G B bar is the molar free energy of component B. If you do divide by the total uh, the total free energy normalized by the total number of moles present, then you can you can have this G, which is the molar free energy of the whole system, the whole system molar free energy, that is X A G A bar plus X B G B bar. Right? Uh, G A bar, you know that this is the molar free energy of component A. GB bar is the molar free energy of component B. And then you differentiate this, you get XA DGA plus XB DGB plus GA DXA plus GB DXB. Okay. And out of this, you can apply the Gibbs Duhem relationship, and then you can see that the XA DGA term and XB DGB term that becomes zero. So therefore, you have DG, you can simply write this. G A D X A plus G B D X B. Right? And that way, if you can write D G by D X A, then you know that X A plus X B is equal to one. So X A would be minus X B. And that way, this sort of reduces to G A minus G B. This is the change in the uh, molar free energy of the whole solution. With the change in the uh, number of moles or the mole fraction of A, one particular component, that becomes simply the uh, difference between um, the molar free energy of the two components. Likewise, you can also write, um, you know, this is what we spoke about, the DXA is equal to minus DXB. Uh, and here in this, if you multiply XB, if XBGA minus XBGB, okay, and then you reorganize that, you, you get the, um, this should be G bar. Oh, G bar plus XBDG bar by DXA is equal to GA into the number of moles, total number of moles. Finally, it actually, it's, it's a small algebraic calculation. You sort of get the numbers GA bar, which is the, Molar free energy of component A, that is the molar free energy of the whole solution plus XB into dg by dx, which is which is what the change in the molar free energy with the change in the mole fraction of A. The, uh, the, the molar free energy of component A is going to be the molar free energy of the whole solution plus XB times the slope of G by XA, G, G XA change, change of molar free energy normalized by the mole fraction of A. Likewise, you'd see that GB uh, is sim similarly related to the total mole, fra uh, mole, mole free energy of the whole solution plus XA times uh, DG by DXB, right? So uh, eventually what, what it, Gives you is the it relates the partial molar Gibbs free energy um, of of a binary solution and the change in molar uh, Gibbs free energy of, of that solution. How how is is the uh, total uh, molar free energy molar Gibbs free energy changed with the change in uh, the partial molar free energies, which is the component A and component B. E. I think I should have kept. Uh, um, graphic or, or 
figure of all these components. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll show you that something. I think I don't have that. So with, with this knowledge, uh, let's calculate what happens to the Gibbs free energy of formation of a solution. Much the same way um, we had calculated the Gibbs free energy and uh, enthalpy change of, of, of mixture of gases. Just that instead of uh, gases, uh, substances we have here, liquids and different kinds of liquids would have different kind of meat. But currently we are talking about uh, the liquids which are ideal in nature, which is you know what follow um, the wrong chain behavior. All right. Um, so uh, that's that's uh, the change of Gibbs free energy upon mixing is something we can write del G. Okay, and that is um, the free energy of solution minus the free energy of the pure substance. All right, so it's G G I solve and minus G I pure. So I is referring to a particular component, right? And when you sum it out, then you get the total. Free energy system. And you know that pressure, uh, sorry, free energy uh, is, is can be related in terms of pressure, right? And in, in uh, it's the pressure you, you have to write activity, which is nothing but uh, the ratio of fugacities. Okay, fugacity of the normal state, normalized by the fugacity of the pure state, right? So that is RT ln AI. Now, for the component I, the pure state, the free energy would be uh, NAGA0 is NBGB0, which is for the number of moles of component A into the mole of free energy of component A in the unmixed state, in the pure state. All right. Plus the number of components, number of moles of component B multiplied by the free energy. Uh, mole free energy of component B and in the unmixed condition, pure condition. All right. And you calculate the same thing for the component I after it, the solution has been mixed. And you see that this NAGA bar, which is the uh, partial molar free energy of A, and like you like we see a partial molar free energy of B, and you likewise you calculate the NA into this free energy and into this free energy. Right now, when you want to get get del G, then you like to get uh, the solution free energy minus the pure free free energy, and this term minus this term, which is what is going to give you del G of mixture. Right, so you take the common out because you know, number of moles uh, of component A remains same as is the case with B. Here you, you see the change in the free energy. Of component A uh, from its mixed state minus uh, from pure state. All right, and so that's what we write as GA bar minus GA zero, and that this term we can express as del G A upon mixing. But like was here, we, we write as del G B upon mixing. That's the change in molar free energy of B upon mixing, change in molar free energy of A upon mixing. All right, and this one you can. Right, simply as del G mixture is RT and A ln A, that's activity of A, plus NB ln activity of B. Okay, and it, it's a simple expression. You see that um, it's pretty much similar to what expression we had for the uh, gases mix. All right, and this one, if you or simply normalized by the number of moles, then you get the molar free energy upon mixing, that is RT, uh, that's not divided by NA plus NB, that's the total number of moles, and you get from NA, you get XA, and from NB, you get XP. And that you can generalize as the form is RT, XI, LN, AI, and you take the summation of the Different components that you might have in the solution. All right. And the most simplistic manner of writing this equation for uh, a Raoultian solution is simply RT XI LN XI. 
right? Because you know that activity and mole fraction are the same thing for uh, the Raoult Jenkins. So, simple expression is RT, uh, del G mixture is RT, uh, XI and XI, and we take summation of that. Likewise, so, the, so uh, what, what could happen? Is, is it a spontaneous process when you mix two liquids? And notwithstanding the fact that there is um, no interaction between them, even then, when there is no interaction, see that xi of, of um, any component that's that's going to be a fraction, and this is also going to be a fraction. So see that this is always going to be a negative quantity, right? So it, even if there is, uh, even if it is a round channel liquid, uh, the 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 entropic aspect of mixing would actually uh, make this process spontaneous. And for that, the change in free energy is, is always going to be negative. So it's a, it's a spontaneous process, as you can see from, from the free energy. All right. Likewise, you can calculate the change of volume upon mixing of uh, any component when it's in a pure state and when it's there in the in mixed state. It might seem uh, very trivial, but it is not. You know, take liquid A and liquid B, and then mix them together. Uh, what would be the molar volume of liquid A? Uh, would it change? It actually can change. Okay, and turns out it's it's not going to change only if it's an ideal solution, right? And and you can sort of mathematically prove this is that you know you know the volume the molar volume is actually uh, can be uh, written in, in the form of uh, free energy, which is del G by del P at constant temperature. And of course, you know, add the composition here. And this one, it, it, it comes from the term dG is VDP minus SDT. You know, from the basic relationships, right? When dG is VDP minus SDT, when you take constant temperature, then dG becomes VDP and uh, new try to see the uh, change in free energy with change in pressure, you, what you're left with is, is volume, right? And you can write the same expression for all of the components, any component that you have. And uh, this one is, is after mixing of that component, component I, and this expression is before mixing, right? it's in the pure state for the component, right? And uh, likewise, you can simply write del of del G, which is upon the mixing process by del P is going to be the change in the molar volume uh, for the whole process. A change in molar volume um, in, in the mixing state. So you get that expression del, del G by del P is, is del V. And this is the change in molar volume upon mixing of the component I. Now you know that this del G expression is something which can be written as RTL and XI. Right, and this is a simple uh, relationship. And you know that mole fraction is not a function of P. So if, if mole fraction is not a function of pressure, then uh, this term, the del of this term, del RL and XI, uh, normalized by del P, is, is going to be zero. That means that uh, the, the change in the molar volume upon mixing of component I is going to be zero. That means for component I, the molar volume in its pure state and its molar volume after it is mixed with another liquid is, is not going to be uh, different. It's, it's the same thing. So the change in molar volume is, is equal to zero. So the change in free energy, which is a, a non-zero quantity, which is actually a negative quantity, and change in molar volume upon mixing of the component that is the is another thermodynamic parameter. What else? We have okay. Now, if the total uh, ch uh, change in molar volume is, is is zero, then we can also figure out that this is a combination of N A. Uh, you know the changes in the molar volume of component A is the molar volume of component B, which you can write del V is N A into the change in molar volume. Of component A upon mixing, this can be the change in molar volume of component B upon mixing. And you know that 
these are the positive number, Na is a positive number, Nb is a positive number, and zero. If that is so, then both these numbers are, are also going to be zero. Okay, so, um, I'm sorry, it's, it's the other way around. This is zero, and this is a positive number, and this is zero, and this is a positive number. So this the total uh, change in volume is also going to be zero. So you can simply write that um, there is no change in molar volume for mixing of two or more components in an ideal solution. Right. So we talked about free energy. We talked about volume. What what happens to the enthalpy? And in much the similar way, you you can write expressions of um, enthalpy and free energy. We've already figured out an expression for free energy and how does it relate to um, and, and, and what happens to free energy upon mixing that we already know the relationship. Okay. Now, if you want to see the change in a particular thermodynamic parameter, for example, we talked about um, molar volume uh, and likewise we can talk about enthalpy and how uh, these thermodynamic parameters have changed uh, on how do they behave upon mixing can be figured out by trying to find out their relationship with free energy. We know the expression for free, free energy, and from this, we can calculate what is the expression uh, for change for enthalpy. Okay. So from the Gibbs-Helmholtz equation, you can write that del by del P of G by T is minus H by T squared. And this simple formula, you can apply to two components, uh, two situations, that is, uh, what happens to the component I on its pure state and what happens to the component I in its mixed state, right? So del of del, del, del by del P of GI bar by T, and this is referring to the free energy of the component I after mixing, that can be written as minus HI by T square, where HI is the enthalpy of component I after mixing. Like when you can get a the expression for the pure component, which is minus HI zero by T squared. This refers to the enthalpy of the pure component I um, that, that is before mixing. Now you can write the expression for uh, the mixing process, which is the del by del, del T of, um, you know what, here there is a mistake. This has to be T, isn't it? So it's got to be T. And this is what T is. Okay, now when you talk about the mixing process and the mixing process, uh, how it can be defined is, you know, there's a, the molar free energy of component I after mixing minus before mixing. And this is the del G part. And this del G part, you can write as HI bar minus HI zero. But this one is the enthalpy after mixing in the solution. And this is enthalpy in the pure state. So this you can write del by del T of del G by T is minus del H by T squared. And this is for the mixing, you can write this one for the mixing, right? Now, this expression, if it is so, then how do you write it? We know that this del G I upon mixing is RTL and XI, right? Now, we talk about del G by T, then your expression uh, is D by DT, RL and XI. And that is equal to minus del H by T square. And like the mole fraction, most mole fraction is not a function of pressure, neither it is a function of temperature also. All right, so this expression is, is you know, Xi is not, uh, is, it's not a function of P. That would be that del H I for ideal solution upon mixing is, is going to be zero which actually means that the of component mixing and enthalpy of component I before mixing are one and the same, right? And uh, you can write the total, like, like we did for the volume case, the total change in free, free energy is, um, at, um, I'm sorry, the total change in enthalpy is zero, and this one can be written as Na del H A, and NB del HP, and this, uh, since this is zero, 
and this is zero, and these are positive numbers, you'd see that uh, the total quantity is, is, is zero. This is for the individual quantity. This is instead of I, uh, for I, you can write A, and uh, for I, you can write B also, and this individual component, the, the, the partial molar heats of, um, partial molar of uh, enthalpy of formation of component A upon mixing is zero. The partial molar enthalpy of uh, formation of B upon mixing is, is zero. And these are positive numbers. The total enthalpy change upon mixing is also zero. So you have uh, there's a non-zero change in free energy, um, zero change in volume, and zero change in enthalpy. That's what we're talking about as ideal solutions. Now there's one more quantity left, which is what happens to the entropy. And it's as simple as anything, you know, it's del G by del T is minus S. And this comes from DG's VDP minus uh, SDT. And when you talk about a DG, a change in uh, free energy at constant pressure, that's going to be minus SDT. And del G by del T is equal to minus S. And likewise, instead of G, if, if, if you write del G upon mixing, that's that's fine. Because you can simply write GI0 minus, I'm um, sorry, GI bar minus GI0. That will ex uh, explain, uh, that will uh, indicate the mixing process. And uh, we can write del G upon mixing of this uh, quantity is actually equal to minus triangle S, minus delta S, that is the change in entropy upon mixing. Now you know that del G is equal to R, uh, RT and A L and X A. So what will happen to del S? You get a minus and you, you, you lose the T. That's as simple as that. Minus R N A L and X A plus N B L and X B. And like we did for free energy uh, and converted to molar free energy change upon mixing, you, you can write um, the molar Entropy change upon mixing is, you know, normalize this NA by the total number of moles. That gives you, instead of NA, you write here XA. That is minus R XA ln XA plus XB ln XB. Or you can simply write as minus R summation of XI ln XI. All right. So if you look at it, then um, you have a non zero change in free energy, enthalpic change is zero. And you have an entropic change that is written here. Means entropy is actually this is a negative, and this is a fraction. And since this is a fraction, this number is going to be a negative one. And this number is also a fraction. This is going to be a negative one. This is positive, but a fraction. So the total number here is going to be a negative number, which when multiplied with a negative is a gross positive number. This is an entropy. The molar change in entropy upon mixing is going to be a positive number. So mixing of ideal solutions leads to an increase in entropy. And that's why it is it's, it's favored. Okay. And that's very true because there is no contribution of enthalpy. So the free energy change is actually reflected from the change in entropy itself. It is the entropic increase which is decreasing the free energy. And the, the process becomes spontaneous. Right? So uh, if you look at it, uh, this is pure component. This is the del G. This is del G upon mixing. We're trying to plot del G upon mixing of two components, uh, A, complete A here, and then complete B here. Uh, or is it the diff reverse way? Yeah, mole fraction of A that's given here. That means it is pure B here and then pure A here, right? From here, it is completely A. There's no B here and here pure B, no no A here. As you keep on adding a little bit of A, how, how the system changes? And that is, of course, not talking about um, anything else. It is for ideal solutions, right? Hello. 
Okay, sorry guys. Uh, so we are trying to see what's the change in free energy when we add uh, A onto B, all right? And this is what is written here. It's pure B and this is pure A and then keep on adding. And you'll see that the, the, the free energy, uh, total free energy or the change in free energy is kind of coming as negative. Okay, and it's coming negative and to the point where 0.5, that's where it's maximum. And why it is maximum? Because you know, if you look at the formula, it's del G. Where's the where's the formula? Here. All right. So X A L N A and X B L N A. Or it's I round gen solution. You could talk, talk about X A L N X R X A is X B L N X B. That's where you'll see that 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That's where it sort of becomes minimum. You can see that. You can mathematically see what's the point where del G uh, is going to be the most minimum one, all right? And you want to see the change of slope of del G with X A, this is where it becomes zero. There's no change mode, there's no further change. And, and it sort of shoots up. So this is where it's the most, um, what is it, most stable. Two uh, like equal parts of A and B, and that's uh, where the solution is most stable. That's the maximum decrease in free energy is, is going to come, all right? And, and, and if you follow a path like this, and this is for the free energy term. And if you want to um, put an enthalpy here, how it's going to look like? It's going to be simply a straight line because, you know, even if you add um, A and B, the del G, del H is, is not going to be any different. It's going to be the same, okay? And if you want to plot H A and H B, then it could be slightly different because the enthalpy of component A and enthalpy of component B, those might be different ones. If they are so, then on the on the vertical axis, there might be some of someone is here and someone is, can be there. But then del H is is um, zero. You know, no matter how in how many proportions, how many different proportions you mix A and B. That's not going to change. So it's going to be a flat line. So if it is about um, free energy, what happens to the entropy? Okay, and you know that del G is del H minus T del S. Okay, and del G curve is something, and del H is zero. Then how, how does the del S curve going to look like? Because there's a minus T term involved. What you do is here in this curve, you divide this curve by minus T. Do you see that here? NRT is here. And then divide this curve by minus t. So instead of this, the curve is going to be up there. But then it's to be normalized by t because that's where you're, you're trying to plot del s here. So it is the nr kind of curve. And you see just the reverse, this is a positive that in terms of shape, all the numbers are going to be slightly different because of the t. And here you see that it, the curve is maximum when it's 0.5 number when there's equal proportion of. A and B are mixed. That's where the system is completely randomized, and that's where it, it sort of poses um, the maximum change in entropy. This is the most uh, chaotic state or random state uh, where A and B are um, uh, in the solution with maximum randomness, right? And that's why it is more stable. It's not because of the enthalpy part, as I told you earlier. So these two liquids, ideal solutions, when mixed are randomly going to be distributing the A and B molecules uh, so much so that this process is spontaneous. And at 0.5 each of A and B, you'll see that it's the more stable one. Now, you, you, I can give you uh, a, a, an assignment where consider three um, components, A and B and C, and find out the equilibrium composition uh, of, of that ideal solution uh, comprising of component A, B, and C. All right, you think about it, what uh, you think it's going to be like. Okay, now we talk about, uh, so this is the summary, you know, this del B is zero, there's no change in the molar uh, volume of each of the phases or 
or the total. There is no change in the enthalpy of the system, neither the individual nor the total, total enthalpy change. But the entropy change is going to be minus R X A L N X A plus X B L N X B, or you can simply write this as minus R summation of X I L N X I. And the del G part is also missing here. The del G is my uh, R T, the summation of X I L N X I. Right? The thermodynamic parameters of, of an ideal solution, much like the gases we see. Uh, from this, we can we can talk about uh, the properties of thermodynamics of non-ideal solutions, right? That we will take up uh, in the next class. So if there are questions right now, I, I should, should be able to take.